first of all, I get this, if you like, insight out of nowhere. And, I, and, and from that moment, information, like physical information, if you like, uh, regarding that subject starts coming into my life. Mm -hmm. And this happened with the moon because when I started out to write Human Race, Get Off Your Knees, um, I, I was not intending to write anything about the moon. And I came in one morning, must be about, oh gold, about 18 months ago now, and I sat down in this chair and the energy in the room changed. And of course, after 20 years, you get to know the sequence. The energy, the atmosphere changed. And I thought, oh, go, here we go. And, and clear as anything, in it through my mind, it just said, the moon's not real. The moon's not what you think it is. And I thought, all right then. Uh, you know, I, because of, I've been through the sequence so many times, it's like, okay, we'll, we'll go with this and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. So I put in a few key words into a search engine and immediately up before me came a book called Who Built the Moon yep. by Christopher Knight and Alan Butler. So I thought, oh, well, well, let's make a start. I'll read that. So I sent for it, read it um, very quickly and uh, it, it absolutely was pointing in the direction of what I'd just come through my, my, my mind, if you like. And you know what it's, it's like? It, it very much going back to what I've just been talking about. When you come into this world, you tend to accept that what is here is how it is. This is how things are, mate. Um, this is one reason why, you know, we, the generations who've, who've seen a different world to this one, are very, very uh, uh, important and have a very great responsibility because we, to some extent, have the ability to see how things were, to how they've become. People being born into the world now, all this control and stuff, it's, it's life. This is how it is. Yeah. This is why it's fantastic that so many young people, despite that, have seen through it. But the, the classic is the moon. The moon comes up. It goes through its sequence every month. And, well, it's the moon, mate. Oh, it's the full moon tonight. Look, but when you start asking questions, whoa, I didn't know that. And first of all, um, the, uh, the mathematics um, between the moon, the sun, and the, and the earth, as documented in this book, Who Built the Moon, um, are fantastic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, as they say in the book, uh, the maths involved in the earth moon sun system is nothing less than staggering and the moon moon was placed there with the accuracy of the proverbial swiss watchmaker <laughs> and a few a f just a few weeks ago i watched a mainstream scientific program on the bbc i think it was program no it wasn't it wasn't a strand it was an, a one off um, do we really need the moon and this scientist mainstream scientist um, goes on and on about how uh, it's perfectly positioned for its effect on the earth to give us the kind of world we live in but then she says um but that it is now perfect that is now perfectly placed to sustain life is pure luck a cosmic coincidence <laughs> yeah right uh, yeah, yeah right so then you realize um uh, when when you start looking at the moon with an open mind let the information be the guide as they say in the book the moon is bigger than it should be it's apparently older than it should be, yeah. much lighter in mass than it should be, it occupies an unlikely orbit, and so extraordinary that all existing explanations for its presence are fought with difficulties, and none of them could be considered remotely watertight. Because, again, uh, scientific fact, if you play it back, becomes scientific theory that through repetition has been accepted as fact. So you say, well, how does science say the moon was created? Well, they say the moon was created by a kind of Mars-type planet hitting the Earth in its formation period and, and a, a great chunk coming off and becoming the moon called the whack theory. When that didn't follow through in terms of, um, uh, of, of, of the physics and the, 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 the logic of it, they came up with a double whack theory where the, where the planet smacked into the Earth and then came back and gave it another smack. Um, and, and you say, you don't know, do you? That's the fact. <laughs> Never mind that all scientists say. Well, scientists say a lot of things that have been proved wrong. And then you start looking at um, the size of it. I mean, <laughs> it's bigger than Pluto. There's nothing it, in our solar system that, no. that compares when it comes to satellites. It's a quarter of the size uh, in diameter of the Earth. It's incredible, actually. 
2,160 miles in diameter, and some scientists talk about a twin planetary system, not a not even a a, a planet a moon system. Right. And and then you um, you start looking at um, what what some scientists have said when when they've looked at the moon, like a, a guy called Erwin Shapiro um, from the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. Great quote. He says the best explanation for the moon is observational error. The moon doesn't exist. And that, enough societies said it seems easier to explain the non-existence of the moon than its existence. And then you start looking at the way the moon has reacted when it's been uh, specifically hit by uh, NASA after they put seismometers up there. And, and uh, they say that it rang like a bell. That's uh, right. And uh, when you, um, when you uh, look at uh, some of the quotes that uh, they're saying about the moon, you think, well... Where are you? Why aren't we pursuing this? Because they don't want us to know that. Um, when uh, they uh, hit it uh, again um, it, it, with a, a, an even bigger uh, smack um, later, um, it reacted like a gong, according to NASA scientists, the moon. Mm. And um, uh, according to um, Who Built the Moon, Alan Butler, one of the authors, was told by um, a guy called Ken Johnson, supervisor of the data and photo uh, control department during the Apollo missions, that when it was hit the second time, much more powerfully, the moon not only rang like a bell, but the whole moon wobbled in such a precise way that, quote, it was almost as though it had gigantic hydraulic damper struts inside it. You know, um, mm. and, and this must be from the L-Cross mission back in 2009, I think. Well, they, they, they've been playing this out over, over many, many uh, years and decades. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, as you, you well know, in um, around 1970, uh, two scientists from the Soviet Academy of Sciences wrote a, a detailed article saying that they thought the moon was a gigantic spaceship. <laughs> and, uh, and when you, um, you, you also look at what some of the uh, scientists have said, uh, with regard to um, why uh, it, it v vibrates and reverberates as it does and rings like a bell, is is the idea that the that, that, that it might be hollow. A NASA scientist, Gordon McDonald, said in the early 1960s, that far back, it would seem that the moon is more like a hollow than an homogeneous sphere, huh. and. Uh, uh, another one, uh, Sean Solomon, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, um, he said uh, that uh, from, from the evidence that uh, they'd gathered at that time, it, it indicated the frightening, quote, frightening possibility that the moon may be hollow. Um, and as uh, Carl Sagan, the great cosmologist, said, a natural satellite cannot be a hollow object. And for me, you know, again, when you... Uh, you can go on the on the internet on YouTube and see um, uh, people like uh, Sergeant Carl Wolf um, speaking from his experiences when he was um, a photographic uh, engineer at the Langley Air Force Base in Virginia, of course CIA, where he talks at um, the uh, the uh, National uh, Press Club was it at uh, in Washington some few years ago, where he's and others are telling of their experiences inside the uh, system, inside the uh, the the game, if you like, of how um, they saw things that the public's never been told about. And of course, Sergeant Carl Wolf talked about the fact that he went uh, over to an area in the Langley Air Force Base where he needed to do some repair work and he was in the area where they were putting together what he called mosaics you know like um, uh, uh, pictures from different passes of the moon uh, over the moon and then they would put them together to make a whole picture mm -hmm. and he, he said that the guy over there um, showed him pictures and said we found a base on the moon he said, I saw the base on the moon and many other strange structures, like incredibly uh, uh, high, uh, almost like uh, towers, obelisk-like towers yeah, and domes yeah. and, and what have you. Um, and uh, other people talked at that, uh, that event in Washington about how uh, NASA was airbrushing out these uh, things before the pictures were released to the public. And <clears throat> it's very clear that um, there's a lot of uh, activity on the surface of the moon. But what I'm saying, Henrik, is um, that's uh, one aspect of it, yes. 
but what's the real key is inside the moon because inside the moon is is where um it's all going on um of course there are things on the surface inside is where it's going on and um it, it's, you believe uh, then that it, the- it's, it's, it's a, sorry, David. Go ahead, mate. Do you believe that it's a? Um, are we talking about a technology being, you know, uh, broadcasted, emanated from the moon to to planet Earth, or, or how do you perceive that? To yes, to yes, absolutely. That mm-hmm. yes, and I think it's um, uh, connected in in that um, to to Saturn. And what what I found um, interesting was um, a year after this book came out, um, where I said that the moon was broadcasting a frequency uh, field which was having two effects part of it was blocking information we would normally decode and the other thing it was doing was giving us information uh, to create a false reality you know in the um, uh, matrix movie if you change you know when when, when, uh, Morpheus is explaining the facts of the matrix to neo for the first time if you take the quote and just put moon inside it you pretty much got where i'm going with this <laughs> because um, the quote was the matrix what i say the moon matrix is everywhere it is all around us even now in this very room you can see it when you look out your window or you turn on your television you can feel it when you go out to work or when you go to church when you pay your taxes it is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth and that's what I'm saying this moon matrix um, is doing. And like I say, what I found interesting was um, when I uh, had, had obviously written the book, it had come out, and, and just like I think it was about two months ago, mm-hmm. it's been out about nine, um, nine months now, um, I, I got this email from a lady, I think she was in Brazil, and she said, have you read a book called Earth by Barbara Marciniak? Now, I met Barbara Marciniak back in the 1990s. Um, She um, became well-known in that kind of arena for channeling um, information Mm -hmm. um, from what um, was said to be a Pleiadian source or a Pleiadian consciousness. So that's what said. And she produced some books, um, um, an excellent one, I thought, called Bringers of the Dawn. Uh, But the other one called Earth, I'd not read, um, even though, uh, funnily enough, I had it. Um, on my bookshelf so what she said was here's some page numbers I've just read your book Human Race Get Off Your Knees here's some page numbers you, you know you'll be interested to read this and this is what um, this is what those page numbers said it was a channeled book um, and, and you know basically explaining what was going on and basically it was about how a group of people a large group of people have come at this time to help make the the change and help um, ease out this control system well this is what it said the moon is a very powerful electromagnetic computer the energy from the moon has been beaming electromagnetic frequencies onto the earth for eons now to maintain the two-stranded DNA the moon is a satellite that was constructed it was anchored outside earth's atmosphere as a mediating and monitoring device a supercomputer or eye in the sky earth must be owned by those who dwell there however it is not you have outside gods creator energies who prevent you as a species from having free reign with your kundalini because the potential of our Uh, our energy field Hmm. the influence of the moon as a main satellite computer affects all of the earth the moon's programs have for eons been of great limitation toward human beings they are repetitive cycles that the moon creates to which you respond the moon matrix and when I read that I mean it's another thing that that happens in this um, sequence of events um, Henrik in 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 my life the last 21 years Um, when you've gone with something um, often when you've gone with it and and you know you say I'm going with this it feels right to me it's I I feel this is right Uh, then something will happen often that kind of gives you a confirmation yeah Uh, just says yeah yeah see look it is right, and and that's what I, I kind of kind of hit me when I read that because mm. what I've just read from that book um, is as as you will know it, it's it's in um, what I'm saying in, in, in my book uh, and and it was such a powerful kind of 
whoa confirmation for me that we're we're going in the right direction here not that everything is is 100 right we're trying to uncover something doesn't want to be uncovered i mean crikey um 